What if you could fly across the country in less than three hours, and nobody on the ground even noticed you passed overhead? Sounds impossible, right? For decades, every attempt at supersonic travel has been crushed by one thing, the deafening boom that rattles windows and terrifies entire neighborhoods. Hidden in the desert right now, NASA is testing an aircraft so strange that its nose stretches a surprisingly 11 meters, which is 33% its entire length. This secret project is promising to break the sound barrier in a way no one thought possible. Today, we're pulling back the curtain on the jet that could rewrite the future of air travel. Let's explore how America built the world's most advanced jet, the X-59 aircraft. Supersonic flight isn't new, but it has always been plagued by one problem that remains unsolved since the tragic retirement of the Concorde. Currently, NASA's engineers are working on developing a highly advanced jet that will break the sound barrier without producing a sonic boom. But let's take a throwback into history and see how supersonic aircraft were first created. The year is 1947 and the world had just started recovering from the aftermath of World War II. Chuck Yeager, who was a United States Air Force officer and a war veteran, smashed through the sound barrier and proved humans could fly faster than the speed of sound. His discovery was classified as one of the two most significant advances in aviation at that time. However, the celebration of such a groundbreaking achievement was short-lived. It turned out that every time a supersonic jet tore through the sky, it left behind a rolling shockwave so violent it shattered glass, scared livestock, and sent communities into outrage. With the passage of time, the controversies gradually faded away. Then came a new aircraft in the 1970s, meant to revolutionize air travel. During this era, engineers created the Concorde, a sleek, delta-winged aircraft that would fly at twice the speed of sound. This new invention was supposed to be a futuristic aircraft at that time. It was a supersonic plane designed like a flying bullet that could cross the Atlantic Ocean in three and a half hours. The Concorde's cabin offered its passengers a luxurious onboard experience, but for the people under its flight path, a nightmare. Windows rattled, buildings shook, and even chickens stopped laying eggs. That backlash forced governments to ban supersonic flights over land locking Concorde into only ocean routes. And then, tragedy struck. After three decades of enduring public outrage, the Concorde dealt itself a final blow as Air France Flight 4590 crashed in 2000. Apparently, the airplane had burst into flames upon takeoff, resulting in the death of everyone on board. By 2003, the last Concorde was retired, but NASA wasn't ready to let the dream die. So how do you silence something that's basically a thunderclap riding on jet fuel? To help you understand why this question posed a huge problem for engineers, let's first take a look at what the sonic boom is and how it is created. When an aircraft moves, it pushes air molecules out of the way. At supersonic speeds, those disturbances ripple outward as pressure waves, which we instantly hear as sound. The aircraft often moves as fast as the pressure waves it creates, while staying ahead of them. Since the sound waves can't escape forward anymore, they start piling up. Instead of a gentle flow of sound waves, the air compresses into a dense wall of pressure around the aircraft's nose and wings. The moment it shatters through its own compressed sound waves is what we call breaking the sound barrier. Once through, the stacked up shock waves don't just vanish, they spread outward in a cone shape, trailing the plane. Eventually, they will hit the ground as the famous sonic boom. And this isn't just a little pop. It's a wall of sound, around 105 decibels, which is about as loud as being inside a techno nightclub in Berlin. For 50 years, it seemed like the boom was untamable until now. The X-59, with its revolutionary, quiet, supersonic technology, is about to prove what many once thought impossible, flying faster than sound, while making a noise no louder than a car door closing. That's a drop from 105 decibels to just 75. 
To make this possible, engineers had to rethink everything about aircraft design. They went back to the drawing board, but this time with a powerful tool the Concorde era never had. Supercomputers. At NASA's Langley Research Center, the work began with one question. How do shockwaves actually move around an aircraft? Using advanced wind tunnels, they discovered that shockwaves didn't form in just one place, but in several spots along the plane's body. In traditional designs, these waves combined into a loud boom. But NASA engineers realized that if they kept the waves apart, they could reduce the noise that reached the ground. In 2017, early tests of a small-scale model showed encouraging results. With special flow visualization, they could see how different shapes changed the shockwave pattern. This was a turning point. From there, engineers ran countless computer simulations, refining every curve and angle. Each new design was tested virtually to predict its sonic footprint. To check their work, they used wind tunnel tests with Schlieren photography, a method that makes shockwaves visible. This confirmed their models and gave them confidence to push further. By late 2018, tests on another scale model proved the idea could work. This was the turning point that birthed the X-59. The new aircraft appears to be strangely different from traditional planes. Its most striking feature is its nose, which stretches an unbelievable 11 meters. Apparently, the sleek, spike-like nose slices air so smoothly that the shockwaves spread out into smaller ripples instead of merging into one explosive boom. Interestingly, the engine of the new aircraft isn't placed under the wings like every commercial jet you've ever seen. Instead, the X-59's single power plant is tucked on top of the fuselage. This approach was adopted to shield the ground from extra shockwaves and keep the sound footprint as small as possible. This jet has no front windows. Pilots can't see what's ahead of them at all. Instead, NASA built a futuristic external vision system comprising a set of ultra-high-definition cameras feeding a massive screen inside the cockpit. Basically, pilots are flying this jet through a digital windshield. Now here's the part most people miss. This design wouldn't even exist without raw computing power. Designing the jet was one thing. Proving it can actually work? That's the brutal part. Before the X-59 even touches the sky, NASA is pushing it through a gauntlet of tests. First, they took an engine from a retired F-18 Hornet and rebuilt it to fit their purpose. They then shoved it into this futuristic airframe. Afterward, engineers fired up the aircraft in an attempt to test its engine for the first time in late 2024. That alone was a massive milestone. Then came the low-speed taxi tests. And for the first time, the X-59 rolled down the runway under its own power in July 2025. To outsiders, it just looked like a slow drive. But for NASA, watching that bizarre long-nosed jet move on its own wheels was proof that years of design and assembly weren't just theory anymore. Engineers needed to know that a single imperfection won't snap under Mach 1.4 flight conditions. They're even calibrating every sensor, every fuel tank, every rivet. Because in this jet, precision isn't optional, it's survival. Oh, in case you didn't get the technical term, Mach 1.4 flight conditions require an aircraft to travel 1.4 times the local speed of sound, which is a speed of approximately 925 miles per hour. Do you know? Even if NASA perfects the technology, the X-59 won't be useful unless the laws change. For more than 50 years, flying faster than sound over land has been outrightly banned in the US. But now, for the first time in decades, the rules are starting to bend. In June 2025, the US president signed an executive order telling the FAA to finally rethink the supersonic ban. For NASA, that's a green light to prove their jet isn't just quiet in a lab, but quiet in real life. However, regulators aren't just measuring decibels anymore. They're measuring human reaction. That means the future of supersonic flight doesn't rest with NASA or even the FAA. It rests with everyday people. NASA's X-59 has already soaked up more than $632 million. And that's just a prototype. If private companies want to scale this into fleets of passenger jets, we're talking billions more. 
airlines won't gamble unless they're sure customers will actually pay sky-high ticket prices. The X-59 could mark the moment humanity stopped crawling across the skies and started sprinting. Of course, nothing is guaranteed. It could fail, like so many projects before. But if it succeeds, the quiet crack of its sonic thump won't just echo across neighborhoods, it'll echo across history. And when you hear that faint boom overhead in the future, you might just remember this moment, when the dream of supersonic flight was reborn. Subscribe for more. Until next time.